Hi there, thanks for joining me. It's Ray with Tarot Living. So today we are going to actually talk about Druidcraft Tarot deck in more detail. As I'm sure most people know, Druidcraft made my top deck on my top five favorite decks. It is my top deck and it is the deck that I use most frequently. Um, however, I wanted to talk about it in more detail because there's a few things that you should realize about Druidcraft. And so the first thing is that it actually can come into a, come as a package where you've got the cards and the book, and the book is excellent. And you can go to my previous video on uh, some interesting tarot decks. I believe it's in part one, and I go through the book a little bit. The book is excellent. It's extensive. It has information on numbers. It has information on um, you know suits and. All of the cards are well, uh, you know, described. So it's an excellent book, and it's actually a good, good card, good deck for beginners, I would say, because the book is so good, and the deck is certainly easy to understand and follows Rider Waite tradition fairly well. So that's the first thing, and the second thing you should know is that it actually also comes in a smaller package, which was, to be honest with you, a surprise to me, and I'm going to open it today. And this was a surprise because I was actually ordering another deck so that I could cut down a deck for my brother. I don't think he watches my videos anyways for his birthday. Um, because I'm he when I was home and I had done a reading for him, he did love Druid Craft deck. And I know that he would not find the time to cut down the deck himself. So... I was going to do that for him. So I actually ordered it thinking that it only came as, a, you know, with the book. But lo and behold, it came just as the cards, which is great because I happen to have an extra book because I have two decks myself and had only ordered them that way. So this was excellent. So it ended up to just be the deck itself. And so this is the first time I've seen this and the box looks absolutely fantastic. And oh, look at that. It's got like a smaller kind of a companion book version. Is that not cute? Oh my god, he's going to love that. And so this is going to be, as I say, for my brother. So these are the cards. And you can see how large they are and that they have a white border. So I'm going to actually open that. And I'm going to do it very carefully so that I don't, you know, harm any of the cards, obviously. And so this deck... Um, I've got a few that I'm cutting down because I have a second um, deck myself and my bird actually nibbled on one of one or two of the cards and so I was replacing a couple myself. So that's why I have a second book. But this was actually for him. And so that is the deck right there with all of the cards. And you can see that they are fairly large. And when I first had this deck arrive about a year ago, I'd say, or some, somewhere around there, um, I, you know, I picked up the cards and they were just so big and honestly, I thought they were okay, but I didn't know if I could, you know, what I was going to do with such large cards. I mean, it's just not something that you feel, you know, you can barely get your hand across, right, to shuffle. So you probably have to shuffle like this, and I'm sure many people do, and that's fine. And many people like oversized cards, and that's great. And for them, it might be just a great deck just as it is with the border. However, Druidcraft, I think, really shines when you take the border off. So I'm going to put the little box away, which is totally adorable. He's going to love that. And I'm going to show you the process of cutting down the cards. Now, I'm actually not going to show my me trimming the cards because there's many videos out there that shows card trimming. But I'm just going to show you the equipment that I did use. Um, so I actually, there's a few choices, first of all. So... You have to first of all decide what you want to do. So for me, I took off the white and the gold. And I only took off the white at the bottom. So my card ended up to look like this. And the corners have not been rounded yet. And I have a corner rounder. So I'm going to show you that in a minute. So that's one way of doing it. I love it that way. But you know what? I've seen it where people, again, you can make your own choice. You could just do the white and keep the gold on. And so it would be the same shape, but it would be just a little tiny bit wider. You could also, and I have seen it, where the people keep the gold on, but they actually cut this off because they, I guess they don't feel that they need the actual name. 
and they actually have almost a square card, not quite square, but you know, more square. There's a few different ways you could do this. You know, you could actually cut the gold right off the bottom and leave the name. I kept the gold on, but you, you know, you don't have to. I thought the size of the card that it turned out to be, oh no, I didn't keep the gold on. That's right, I did not keep the gold on. I kept the gold at the top, but not at the bottom. So this is the way I did mine, and the size is perfect for me with my hand. But you could keep the gold at the bottom, or you can keep um, the gold all the way around, and just take the white off. And I think it would be lovely that way. I think it would be absolutely lovely. So the way that you do this is you get a trimmer. Now I've seen it done with scissors. I frankly could never trust myself to cut straight with scissors. I, I'm just not good at that kind of thing. So I actually did get, um, this is like used for um, scrapbooking. Uh, you can so go to Michael's or whatever store, you know, Walmart, wherever, and uh, you know, you can buy it very easily, you can find these. Now I have to say this is probably about $29 though, and it's a fairly good one. Um, so it has a little, um, you know, very, very sharp blade. And so you actually just pull this up, so you can see that. You pull that up, and you put the card in here, just like this. And then you put your little thing down. And then you actually just cut it wherever you want. So you move your card around to cut it appropriately, okay? So that is a wonderful tool and I have found it invaluable in doing my cards. And I don't just do this card, I actually have to tell you, <laughs> I have trimmed many cards. But it's a bit of an obsession. Um, not the ones that I buy for collecting, of course. I would never touch those. But for using, if I actually think I'm going to read with those cards and they would be better trimmed, in my opinion, then I do go ahead and I trim. This is a corner trimmer and it's fabulous. So you see how it's got the two marks on these both of these sides. So you actually put the corner in and then you fit it against. See how I'm fitting it against those two? And then you just go ahead and you down and it comes up perfectly cornered. You see that? Rounded. And it looks so much better than the pointy corner. Isn't that beautiful? So that is about ten dollars. So you can do it with scissors if you want, but I just simply cannot do a professional job with scissors. Now let's talk about cardstock and what cards will do well with trimming and, and some that won't. And I, I do have a couple of cards that are thinner stock than this that did not, I don't think they're going to hold up well to the trimming. They actually get a little bit, I want to use the word frayed, but I don't think that's the right word, but they get a little bit mushy at the on the edges and so you can see that they've been trimmed and they don't have that clear you know finish side that an, a card normally would before it's trimmed so you have to I think look at the card stock but I can tell you about Drew Craft because I work with Drew Craft every day and I have trimmed my cards and I've been working with the same deck for a while and you know I think that the cards themselves when you first get them they actually have a tiny bit of a a tooth to them but very 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 uh, minor but a little bit of a tooth and the cards are a bit brighter in color and I have to say I have noticed having bought a new deck and then comparing it to the one I've been using for a year um, the, the sides have done okay I mean you can definitely see that the sides get a little bit worn but I've noticed that they actually fade the color fades a little wee bit and I think it's because that little bit of a tooth comes off so these cards get actually a bit smoother as you use them. So if you first get your cards and you're like, oh my god, they're too big and they've kind of got a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a tooth to them, but as I say, it's minor. But if that bothers you, just know that these actually get quite a bit smoother. Um, they do tone down, the colors tone down a little bit because I think that tooth is being removed and you can cut them down and they're fantastic cut down. They are an absolutely stunning deck. They are my favorite deck, as everyone knows from having watched my previous videos, favorite deck. And the it's realistic and it's Rider Waite tradition and it's just, I absolutely love it. 
So I just wanted to let you know about the trimming. I know there's a few videos out there on exactly, you know, you can watch someone doing it. I'm sure everyone has their own method. But just go ahead and watch a few of those videos if you want, if you're not quite sure about how to go about doing the trimming. Um, you know, I don't have really a way to set up, you know, showing you the exact trimming. So I'm just going to skip that part. I just wanted to tell you about it and make sure that you realize that if you do purchase these, and you, know, you want to do something with them, you can, and it works really well on this deck. So anyway, you know, what can I say about Drew Craft? I'm just in love with it. I'm just slightly obsessed. So anyway, have a wonderful day, and I hope, uh, I hope this helps a little bit if you are thinking about getting this deck. Take care.